Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Today's topic is water system qualification and validation. This video provides you the brief insight into the water systems used for pharmaceutical manufacturing. There are several types of waters used in the manufacture of pharmaceuticals. The intent of this video is to focus on validation strategies on what systems. The source water, water used for pharmaceutical manufacturing must be at least potable water that is drinking water quality. ICHQ7 section 4.3 with subparts 4.30 to 4.34 prescribe that at a minimum the water used must comply to the requirements of potable water. If the potable water quality is not suitable for manufacturing, it may be treated to get the required quality of water. It's also important that the treatment process should be qualified and validated to meet the specifications routinely. EPA drinking water requirements for public water systems, WHO guideline for drinking water quality, drinking water regulations of the European Union, IS 10500 drinking water specifications provide requirements for potable water. Specifications for potable water quality are provided in all these guidelines. There are many similarities within these guidelines. However, based on the local and statutory requirements, there may be variations in the compliance specifications. Local statutory requirements prescribe certain additional specifications depending upon the quality of the available water in their country. So, it is necessary to check the local statutory specifications also while considering the potable water quality for manufacturing. Let us see the types of water for various operations. Potable water, RO water, soft water, purified water, sterile water, water for injection, distilled water, deionized water, etc. are prominent quality waters that are being used for pharmaceutical manufacturing. These are the typical quality waters that are suitable for pharmaceutical manufacturing. Depending upon the suitability for the type of manufacturing, specific type of water will be selected. For non-sterile pharmaceutical manufacturing, potable water can be used. For sterile parenteral pharmaceutical manufacturing, it is necessary to treat water to meet stringent chemical quality and microbial quality. In such cases, purified water is used. Water for injection, distilled water is mainly used for injectable pharmaceutical products. For cleaning of equipment and non-contact parts, potable water may be adequate. However, a final rinse with purified water is used for further manufacturing process. Since there is a process involved in treatment to generate these types of waters, it is necessary to validate the entire water system for its continuous support for manufacturing. This is very important step. In fact, any pharmaceutical process equipment must be qualified and the process that will be carried out in that equipment must be validated. So, all the critical equipment for water generation and distribution must be qualified to meet the design, installation, operation and performance requirements of the treatment process. A detailed protocol is necessary to capture all the critical parameters. A detailed report after evaluating the data statistically would take you to the best water treatment system. 
statistical tools may include CP, CPK values, average graphs, moving range graphs, scatter plots, Pareto charts, Six Sigma approach, etc. Let us focus on validation of what systems. First validation task is defining the user requirement specifications, that is URS. This is critical. URS largely depends on the quality of the source water. If the source is variant and changes frequently, URS may have to be more detailed to capture the basic vagaries in input quality of water. Output depends on TDS and hardness of the input water. More the TDS and hardness, lesser the output. URS should describe the chemical and microbial attributes of generated water. The water should be at least comply to USP or EP or any other relevant pharmacopoeia. Based on the URS, water system design is established. So the design is dependent on the URS. If the URS is not detailed enough, you will end up in a poorly designed treatment process. Based on system design and operating strategy for conformance to the requirements is documented as DQ. At this milestone, design and operating strategies are documented in detail and signed off as approval of design qualification. When once the DQ is evaluated for its suitability and conformance to the specifications as per URS, and system design, the DQ document is signed off and installation of the system in a suitable environment is done, that is IQ. IQ is initiated after the DQ document approval is signed off. Installation is done in a well-ventilated accessible area. There should be adequate space for routine cleaning and maintenance. It is important to see that the water treatment area is maintained clean and dry always. There should not be any leaks in the entire treatment system or in the transfer lines. It is recommended that there should be access control to the water treatment area. After successful installation of the water distribution system, the IQ document is signed off for next stage of operational qualification, that is OQ. After the IQ document is signed off, operate the system to check whether the operation meets the requirements. OQ is mostly operational checks of the system. During this OQ check, certain chemical and microbial parameters may be evaluated for compliance. In OQ, the correct operation of system components, control sequences, alarms, and verification of set points and operating ranges is done. When all these things are done, successfully OQ document should be signed off. DQ, IQ, and OQ stages establish that the water system designed as per the requirements of URS is designed installed and operated as per the requirements. This is the major part of the water system. This is the first goal of water system validation. Now the system is ready to take off. Performance qualification is a stage where it is demonstrated that all critical control process parameters with all unit operations, maintenance and control sequences working together to generate water of required quality attributes. Performance qualification means to establish that the system performs as expected for longer periods consistently. Water generation, storage and distribution is generally done as a continuous process. The reliability of such a process can be established by monitoring the unit operations online to see that the quality attributes are met always. Detailed validation protocol must be drafted 
it must be reviewed and approved by qm validation programs may start initially with increased frequency of sampling and testing based on the evaluation of data generated the sampling frequency could be optimized pq is carried out in three phases as phase 1 phase 2 and phase 3 thus in phase 1 validation data is collected for about 2 to 4 weeks the time of phase 1 program may depend on the data generated if the data is consistent with the requirements as evaluated statistically phase 1 can be designed for 2 weeks if additional data is needed to establish the consistency of the process an additional 2 weeks may be continued at this stage water may be released for routine use after a risk assessment carried out on the water quality then continue with the phase 2 validation in phase 2 validation a reduced number of sampling points may be considered selection of sampling points should be justified through a risk assessment report at this point of time it is recommended to make reports for phase 1 data and phase 2 data to establish that the system is set for full validation if there are any modifications required it may be justified to continue the validation program for a longer periods phase 3 is carried out after successful completion of phase 1 and phase 2 for phase 3 it is a longer process for one year so phase 3 validation is carried out to cover data from all seasons of the year so it is carried out for the entire year that is 12 months period here reduced sampling and testing as in phase 2 may be designed for both chemical and microbial attributes an interim compliance report is made for every quarter of the year to establish continued support to generate water of defined quality this is important as it can be found how the quality attributes vary seasonally the strategy as described in the previous slide is captured in this slide phase 1 validation is typically for a short period of 2 to 4 weeks at a high sampling rate to cover more critical points of use if there are no significant variations in the critical data generated during the phase 1 validation phase 2 validation may be conducted for another 2 to 4 weeks with lesser frequency of sampling during phase 2 validation the water may be used for routine manufacturing based on the outcome of the risk assessment report separate reports for phase 1 and phase 2 are made and the data is evaluated statistically strategy for phase 3 validation as described in the previous slide is captured in this slide after successful completion of phase 1 and phase 2 validations a routine validation phase 3 is planned the routine validation may include lesser number of sampling points including the return loop sampling return loop sampling is important as it returns after passing through all user points this sample completes the distribution cycle phase 3 validation is carried out for one complete year to capture the seasonal variations in the quality of the water source water quality attributes may vary seasonally this strategy will help to capture the variations in input water quality periodic review of water distribution system operation is captured as interim compliance report for each quarter of the year with the data evaluated statistically let us see the quality attributes source water must be evaluated frequently to establish the 
seasonal variations of input water. Let us look into various quality attributes requirements. The source water quality must be evaluated at a definite frequency. The intent is to capture the overall quality of the source water for the entire year. TOC and conductivity are the main parameters carried out for chemical purity on processed water. Online monitoring of these two parameters are adequate to establish water quality for routine usage. Microbial contamination control must include evaluation of biofilm forming bacteria and non-biofilm forming bacteria. This is important. Care should be taken to evaluate these types of bacteria. Bacterial endotoxin evaluation must also be part of monitoring of processed water. Endotoxin is lipopolysaccharide that is a component of outer cell membrane of gram-negative bacteria. This should be monitored. Appropriate validated test methods must be utilized for evaluation. All the analytical methods that are used for evaluation must be validated for reliable and consistent results. Let us see the conditions for revalidation of water generation and distribution system. Revalidation is necessary when there is a major change in the water generation and distribution system. This is a general rule. Revalidation is necessary to establish that any change has no adverse impact on the validated status of the system. Revalidation is necessary when there is a change in the source water like municipal water supply to groundwater source. This is important. As we discussed in the earlier slides, the source water has significant impact on the validated status of the water system. Risk assessment and necessary limited validation may be necessary when there is a modification, addition or deletion of user points within the validated water generation and distribution system. This is important. If the existing distribution loop is extended to add on more user points or delete some points or additional storage tank installed or any other important thing done, a risk assessment would help with the extent of validation to be carried out. Some useful references are provided below. USP Chapter 1231 provides detailed information on water systems, including specifications and validation requirements. Annex 2 of WHO, Good Manufacturing Practices, Water for Pharmaceutical Use, Guideline on Quality of Water for Pharmaceutical Use, EMA, CHMP, CVMP, QWP, 496873, Oblique 2018, dated 20 July 2020. I hope that the information in this video helps you to understand the basic requirements of water system validations. Read USP 1231 chapter. You get more detailed information for establishing a good water generation and distribution system for pharmaceutical manufacturing. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe, like, and share. Thank you.